We're going to be continuing our discussion about fins, uh, delving into some performance parameters and how we deal with arrays of fins. So now let's talk about some performance parameters. First, we'll talk about some parameters for a single fin, and then we'll extend the discussion to talk about arrays of fins. The fin effectiveness is the ratio of the heat transfer rate with the fin to the heat transfer rate without the fin. While you might think that the addition of a fin will always result in an increase of heat transfer, the fin itself actually represents resistance to conductive heat transfer. If we have a fin made of a material with a low thermal conductivity, the heat transfer rate actually may be lower than if we didn't have a fin at all. Uh, the heat transfer rate of the fin depends on what assumption we use, case A, B, C, or D in table uh, 3.4 in your book. Um, what the heat transfer rate would be without the fin is the heat transfer through the area of the base via convection. The area in the denominator is the cross-sectional area of the fin at the base. Uh, we'll keep the definition of theta here uh, in general. If the effectiveness is greater than two, the increase in material size and cost of adding the fin is justified. So the effectiveness should be greater than one. The efficiency will be a percentage. It's the ratio of the actual heat transfer rate from the, from the fin uh, to the maximum possible heat transfer rate. This would be the case if the entire fin was at the base temperature. As you can see in the picture, ideally, as shown in A, the temperature of the entire fin would be at a uniform temperature. That uniform temperature would be the temperature that would give the maximum temperature difference between it and the surrounding fluid. But as shown in B, the actual case results in the fin temperature getting closer to the fluid temperature as we get closer to the tip. And just as a reminder, the heat transfer rate Q for the fin depends on what assumption you make. Is it case A, B, C, or D? Before we go on, let's talk about thermal resistance. One nice thing, because we're modeling uh, the heat transfer through fins as 1D steady state, we can use Ohm's analogy. So here we have a pin fin of uniform cross-sectional area. The temperatures at base, the temperature at the base is TB, and the rate of heat transfer through the fin uh, to the convective fluid uh, at T infinity is Q. So we could define a thermal resistance, RTF, where T stands for thermal, F stands for fins, uh, for fin. Uh, this resistance, this thermal resistance, takes into consideration the thermal resistance to conduction along the fin axis, as well as the resistance to convection. And we can define this thermal resistance just like we did in chapter 3.1 and 3.3. The thermal resistance is equal to the driving force for heat transfer, the temperature gradient, divided by the heat transfer rate. We can also put the temperature difference in terms of theta. And once again, the equation for the heat transfer rate, as we recall, is based upon what boundary condition we use for our fin, case A, B, C, or D. So what we're going to do now is tie the thermal resistance concept to the fin efficiency. If we didn't have a fin there, uh, the heat would just be removed by convection at the base, which has a cross-sectional area, AC. So that resistance would be, def be defined as 1 over H AC. AC is the cross-sectional area. And this is just what we saw in chapter 3.1 and 3.3, nothing different. So remember, we're trying to tie the thermal uh, resistance concept to fin efficiency. So we could take the equation for fin efficiency. We can define the heat transfer rate with the fin and the heat transfer rate without the fin as a function of, of the temperature gradient and the thermal resistance associated with each of those cases. And because the temperature gradient cancels out, we see that we're just left with the ratio of the thermal resistances. Now, when we're working with fins, we're typically talking about arrays of fins. So we'll define the efficiency of an array of fins now. Um, the overall surface efficiency is defined as the total heat transfer rate from the base over the maximum possible total heat transfer rate 
the maximum heat transfer rate would be for the case that the entire surface of all the fins are at the base temperature. So just like we did when we were defining the efficiency of a single fin and define the maximum heat transfer rate for a single fin, uh, we'll define the maximum heat transfer rate by convection as H A delta T. But there's something we need to pay attention to here. There's a subscript in that T, uh, subscript T on that area. This means we're talking about the total area of the array that is exposed to the convective condition. This includes all the surface area uh, of the fin, but also the area of the exposed base between, uh, between the fins. So if we're calculating the, if we're, if we're calculating the total surface area for the rectangular fins in figure 3.21, we define this in terms of n, number of fins. Um, the first term here accounts for the area on the top and the bottom and the sides. Note that we didn't account for the area at the tip. Why? Well, because that's accounted for in the area uh, total area of the base. That's the total surface area at the base. You just need to think about what surface area through which convective heat transfer is occurring. Now, let's uh, look at the heat transfer rate. Um, it's the sum of the heat transfer from the base and the heat transfer rate from the fin itself. The heat transfer rate from the base is just defined by Newton's law of cooling. And then we can define the rate of heat transfer from the fins in terms of fin efficiency, which we just defined a few minutes ago. Note the inclusion of in the number of fins. And finally, we use the definition of the overall surface efficiency for an array to define the total heat transfer rate. We see that we have a temperature gradient and a and a convective heat transfer coefficient in each term that divides out. And next we, you, we rearrange things to get an expression for the area at the base. And now we rearrange some terms and divide both sides by the total surface area. Um, and your book rearranges it just a tiny bit more so we'll be consistent and there you go. You have the equation for the overall surface efficiency. Now, before we move on, let's recall that we can still use Ohm's analogy uh, since we have a steady state one dimensional heat transfer. So we're gonna define a thermal resistance for the array. We could use the definition of the overall surface efficiency to define the total heat transfer rate. Um, and now we have define the maximum heat transfer rate and the cancel out the temperature gradient. And we have a nice simplified equation. This comes in handy when we want to define a simple expression for the thermal resistance for an array of fins. So figure 3.22 shows two arrays, um, and we could define thermal resistances in parallel. We have a resistance for the fins themselves, which takes into consideration conductive resistance and convective resistance along the surface area of each fin. And we have resistance to the convective heat transfer through the exposed base. Um, the bottom figure in figure 3.22b, uh, we, have, um, a re uh, we have some contact resistance between the fin and the base that's also accounted for. Um, but what we can see is that this is a rather complicated way of expressing things. And a cleaner way of expressing things is to use the thermal resistance for the entire array that we've just arrived, der, uh, that we've just derived. Um, and that way, we only have one thermal resistance to think about. Both ways of expressing the overall re resistance are equivalent. This way is just prettier. So, um, well, I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching and let me know if you have any questions.